what's up hello my name is Emma and today I am doing the booktube oldie tag this tag was created by one of my best friends Monica from Monica Kim and it is kind of a twist on the classic booktube newbie tag so if you haven't come across the booktube newbie tag it is a list of questions for new booktubers to answer when they are first entering the community and it's all about who they are and what they want their channel to be like and so the booktube oldie tag is for people who have been in the booktube community for quite a long time and it's all about what booktube is like when you first joined and how it has changed since. I have been waiting to film this tag for a very special opportunity which was me reaching 200,000 subscribers. <laughs> I do want to do like a big gushy thank you, but I'd like to jump into the tag as quickly as possible. So I just want to say thank you all so, so much for your continued support over the many years that I've had my booktube channel. My whole life has been transformed by this channel and it was all because of you guys and I do not take that for granted. So just thank you so, so much. But before we jump into the tag, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, which is Ana Luisa Jewelry. Ana Luisa makes beautiful high quality jewelry pieces out of noble metals which are resistant to tarnishing and therefore last longer. Their pieces start at $39 which I'm beginning to realize is very affordable for really good jewelry but they do have some more luxury pieces if that is what you're looking for. Now I personally have always bought really cheap jewelry. It was just something I never wanted to spend money on and therefore all of the jewelry I, I've ever owned has always tarnished and broke it's really low quality and I literally have never realized what it is like to own like a nice piece of jewelry until I got my package from Ana Luisa I am not joking I'm like what have I been doing all my life <laughs> I absolutely love all of the pieces that Ana Luisa sent me and I'm wearing a couple of them today I have on the Raza necklace which is a gold pendant that has a jeweled crescent moon and star on it it is super lightweight and comfortable. It's really, really pretty, and it's definitely my favorite gold necklace to wear now. I also have in the Tia gold hoop earrings, which are now my favorite hoop earrings point blank period. I love hoop earrings and maybe it's because I always buy bad ones but they are so uncomfortable for me and they make my ears hurt and I can wear these all day with no problems. And then finally I have the Tia necklace which has this really dainty and delicate V shape. I really like this one because it is such a staple. Because it's so simple it matches everything and I can wear it with almost any outfit. And something else I really admire about Ana Luisa is that their whole brand is founded on a message of sustainability. They are really conscious and track the environmental impact their production has. They now have a zero carbon footprint. So for all of the carbon dioxide they put out into the environment making jewelry, they make sure to replace it with the same amount of oxygen. And they're also transitioning it to using more recyclable shipping materials. I really make a point in these sponsored segments to only work with companies that I would support outside of this video, which Ana Luisa has definitely been added to the list for me. So if you are interested in checking out some of their gorgeous pieces and getting them for yourself, you can use the code EMMABOOKS10 for 10% off your order at checkout using the link in the description. So without further ado, let us dive in to the booktube oldie tag. Question number one is how long have you been a part of the booktube community? So I discovered booktube in November of 2013 and before I started my channel, I was definitely an avid watcher. I posted my first booktube video in January of 2014. I think my booktube anniversary is January 27th and I've been consistently making booktube videos ever since. It's funny to me that sometimes I get comments like, you're back, I missed your videos, because I've never actually taken like an intentional break from booktube. Like at most I've said like, I'm not gonna do booktube stuff for like a week. It's just that as I've gotten older, my schedule is more busy and it's more difficult to keep a consistent upload schedule. But like my love for booktube has only grown since then. And I've been doing it for like six and a half years, almost seven now that is so nuts and literally it feels like every part of my life for the past seven years has in some way been connected to booktube whether it was like a direct result of me like posting on my channel and interacting with people online or it's something else that happened but it feels tied back to booktube because booktube is what I've always been constantly doing 
question number two is what was your biggest misconception before starting booktube so i started booktube when i was 17 and i don't think i really had any expectations for booktube the booktube community can kind of be looked at in like four different generations you have the first generation of booktubers who are the people that really built the platform and began talking about books on youtube i consider myself and many of my friends a part of the second generation of booktube because we had still started booktube really early on in the community when it was very small and close-knit but we had other people in booktube to look up to and strive to be like and then in the past four or five years since i feel like there's definitely like two defined generations of booktube but like i said back when i joined booktube the community was really small and simple it felt like almost everyone knew each other publishers had only just begun recognizing and working with booktubers and there wasn't much to expect from joining than to connect with other readers who talked about the same books as me but i think the big biggest misconception I've had from the growth since joining is that when I first joined because it was so small and it felt like everyone was friends I felt like that's how the whole booktube community would always be and since then it has really expanded to the point where that's not really possible anymore I would hope that the rest of the booktube community feels the same solidarity that I feel with everyone on booktube regardless of if I know you or not but with every community there are going to be subgroups and on booktube they are kind of divided into subgenres of the books that you talk about and within those subgenres there are even sub subgroups where you find the friend groups or what many people consider cliques. Ultimately I just think if we are all coexisting peacefully and can generally come together as one booktube community we're doing all right. Question number three I guess is kind of related to the last response that I just ended up giving and that is how has booktube changed since you first started? Now I can't say when I started booktube I ever really made an effort to explore channels outside of the YA sphere but definitely back when I started booktube it felt like everyone was talking about YA even if there were other channels dedicated to other genres. And that is so different from now where we have booktube channels for every genre, every demographic. Creators of all ages, races, genders, sexualities, nationalities, languages, and levels of ability. This community is just brimming with uniqueness now in a way that I have never seen it before. And admittedly, it really is a stark contrast to the types of booktube channels that I was seeing back when I started, which were all white American teenage girls like myself. And along with that, the content on booktube has really evolved. With having more diverse voices and perspectives, we now have more diverse discussions. And I feel like the conversations we're having on booktube are much more in depth and way more vast in terms of subject than they ever were before. There's definitely less reviews being posted on booktube than when I initially started. There's of course people who are still doing reviews in many channels where that's like their primary content, but ultimately it has become way less of a staple in people's content I feel. And the majority of popular reviews right now are all rant reviews, whereas many years ago you looked for a book review to find someone to gush about your favorite book and tell you all the things they loved about it and now people really only seek out reviews to look at somebody to rant about it and say what they hated and also with that is the emergence of reading vlogs which I think are not only a reflection of wanting to change the format of how we produce reviews but also booktube following the trend of general YouTube where the audience becomes more invested in the creator's life and personality than necessarily the content and subject that brought them to their channel. And finally, a massive change that I've seen since I started booktube is the magnitude of creators' influence. Because booktube has grown, channels that have a following have a much easier time reaching higher milestones than they have in the past. The opportunities for creators are also much grander than they've ever been. Many booktubers use booktube as a primary source of income like myself or a secondary source of income and it's easier to get arcs at a smaller subscriber count than it used to be. The restrictions used to be really high. I think the biggest opportunity I ever got on booktube was I was flown to England all expenses paid for a couple of days and it was a really amazing opportunity. Unfortunately, I got violently sick and had to come home the day after and it turned into one of the most traumatizing experiences of my life. But yeah, a lot of cool stuff has happened to me personally because of booktube, but also it is important to recognize like 
the actual influence that booktubers have on their audience nowadays. I want to speak from personal experience here, which I'm afraid is going to come off as bragging, but I'm really just trying to like explain how I recognize the magnitude of how wild some of these things are. But like when I go to booktube, there are like hundreds of people who wait in line just to meet me for like a couple of minutes. I go out in public in my hometown or on vacation in other countries and I get recognized by people who watch my channel. But also, I have quite a few people that literally have my handwriting tattooed on them. Like they had asked me to write out a sentence for them in my handwriting and have it tattooed on their body forever because I have made that significant of an impact with them that they want me to be with them every day for the rest of their lives. So ultimately it is really, really cool, but it comes with so much responsibility. And if you are looking to get into a similar position to that, you really have to recognize it, learn how to manage it and keep it in check. But overall, I think the majority of the ways that BookTube has grown and changed over the last seven years of me being in the community have all really been for the better and it has transformed this community into something bigger and better than I ever could have imagined. Question number four is what is your favorite booktube memory and while I have so many amazing memories of like filming videos and producing them, my favorite booktube memories are always involving the incredible people I have met through booktube. I'm so lucky to have made the friends that I have through booktube who are so supportive and amazing and uplifting and some of my very very best friends who I will treasure forever. BookCon is always a given. It's one of my favorite times of year every single year and I'm absolutely devastated it couldn't happen this year due to the pandemic. Not only do I love BookCon because it gives me the opportunity to meet so many of you who watch my channel and support my channel and like the same books as me but also it is the few times that I really get to get together with a large group of my friends who are from all corners of the world and I get to spend like a whole week with them and it was just the most amazing experience I always cherish. Oh my goodness, my booktube meetups that I hosted in London and Paris when I was solo traveling last summer. Oh my goodness, like 30 people showed up to me and Momo's, my friend Momo from Momo Chavez's booktube meetup. People came from freaking Paris and Ireland literally just to hang out in a park with me and a bunch of other people involved in the booktube community. And I had a spur of the moment one in Paris and people still came and it was just, it was amazing. And there'll be some of the most amazing experiences that I'll treasure for the rest of my life. Another once in a lifetime trip for me was going to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter with some of my very best booktube friends. Um, it was really exciting because this was the first time we were really traveling together as like a friend group, but it wasn't because of a book convention. It was truly one of the best trips of my life. Oh my god, I need to go rewatch that vlog like right now. <laughs> and along with like getting to see my friends and having these really amazing experiences, something that's really special that I've done with booktube friends is get tattoos together. So we don't necessarily get like matching tattoos that are all the same thing, but it has been like a process and a tradition for us to get together and like all get a tattoo of something that we want. Um, and so now when I look at these tattoos that will be with me individually for the rest of my life, I'll always remember that I got them with those impactful people. I just love BookTube so much and I love my friends and it just makes my heart happy. <laughs> Question number five is what are some books you have read because of booktube? May I direct you to my entire booktube channel? Almost every book I read nowadays is because of booktube. I find out about like 90 5% of my books that I read through booktube and it is very rare that I come across something entirely on my own that I've never heard a friend or a creator talk about. A couple of favorites that have been really impactful for me are of course The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. A lot of my friends had recommended it to me and it really transformed my reading taste. Like that is a significant point where I grew as a reader and as a person from that story. Percy Jackson and other Rick Riordan books, I surprisingly, despite being a reader in my youth, never got into the Percy Jackson books. 
and I only picked them up after seeing booktubers I really like talk about them. And now Rick Riordan is an author I love and I adore his books and I can't wait to continue reading through his collection. Scythe by Neil Schusterman. This one was definitely sold to me by Christine from Poland Bananas Books. I just loved her book talks so much um, and it's definitely become one of my favorite series despite the fact that I still need to finish the toll. Another favorite series of mine that I talk about all the time is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I read Renegades as a part of the Biblio Book Club, which was a book club I co-hosted with a ton of my booktube friends. And I'm super grateful I read it because I don't think I ever would have picked up Renegades if it weren't for them. Although I loved Marissa Meyer before, I did not think that Renegades would be like a book that I would like or be interested in. And now it's an all-time favorite for me. And finally, The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is another all-time favorite series of mine. And I believe it was sent to me by my friend Red from Little Red Reader, who is one of my OG booktube friends. But also Monica from She Might Be Monica, I think, sent me a copy. Um, and it was like the two copies that I had. I was like, all right, I guess I gotta read this book. So um, I read it and I fell in love. And then years later, for the release of King of Crows, me, Monica, and our friend Sarah had a read along for the Diviners Club, which was so much fun. So yes, just endless books that I have read because of booktube. And if you are someone who has read any books because of me and they have been like new favorites of yours or really impactful, I would love to hear it. Um, I really love reading through all of your comments. So any books that you have read because of my channel, I would love to know. Question number six is, what is something that frustrates you about booktube? Honestly, this could be an entire video on its own. Like, I don't think I actually have the time to go into the real things that frustrate me about booktube within the other questions of this video. So if you would like to see a whole video dedicated to like what frustrates me about booktube, my booktube pet peeves, like let me know and I will totally do it. I think two of the main things that have been bothering me in the present on booktube, the first being that I really feel like people on the internet in general just don't allow you to change. Like I said, I was 17 when I started my booktube channel and I only started to really grow when I was like 19, 20. Who I was at that time and the books that I read are very different from the person I am at 24, almost 25. And unfortunately, I feel because I am a figure who's been established in the community for a long time, many people established their own opinions about me a couple of years ago based on who I was then. And because they don't keep up with me now and, and they've already made their determinations about me, um, they don't get to see the change that I've made and therefore they see me as the same person and judge me as such. I just feel like I'm constantly trying to prove myself as being a more mature, sophisticated reader who has honed her critical reading and reviewing skills and people just look at me as like a teenager who's super easy to please and only reads YA and that's just not true. And that goes into a whole other discussion about the assumptions and judgments that people make about booktubers which should be saved for that other video. But the frustration I've been really compelled to talk about in this video is the subtweeting culture on booktube and, and I guess by extension book Twitter but the crossover between those two communities is really similar. I can't express how insulting and hurtful it is to log on to my personal Twitter account and see people that I follow and often considered friends or at least to be friendly with talking about something directly related to me without tagging me or talking to me about it. Like I said, I feel a strong sense of community and solidarity with anyone who is a booktuber, regardless of if we read the same books or if you even like me personally. And it's infinitely more hurtful to see people that I liked and respected to be venting their frustrations about me online in front of their audience that they have as well, instead of messaging me directly or just not talking about it and keeping it to themselves. I'm super aware of how intimidating the power imbalance created by my following is for a lot of smaller creators who may feel like they don't have a voice to talk to me or the means to talk to me about an issue and that's not what I'm talking about. These are people that I've known for years, people that I've exchanged private messages with, that I've gone out of my way to be kind to and try and make a connection as a bigger creator when they're smaller, people that I've hung out with at book events and like save photos that we took together on my phone because I really enjoyed meeting you to have them talking shit about me right in front of my face really really gets to me 
I just think book Twitter really needs to practice gaining satisfaction out of just having a thought to yourself and not sharing it, or at the very least, having discussions with a small intimate group chat of friends and people you really trust to discuss certain community issues with. I feel like anytime someone is like, stop talking about drama, everyone thinks that means they're talking about really important critical decisions going on in the community. And I'm very clearly talking about two separate things here. I just think subtweeting becomes irresponsible at a point because by posting it to your public Twitter account, you are getting your following involved in a situation that you are not even willing to be entirely transparent about yourself by not disclosing who or what exactly is going on. And that causes a lot of confusion for everyone else who doesn't know what's going on. And a lot of times you can get someone involved who is entirely innocent and not involved at all because you are leaving it open to interpretation. I don't want to appear like I'm sitting on a pedestal or a high horse, like I'm so much better than everyone else because I don't subtweet. I'm saying this as somebody who used to compulsively tweet every single opinion I had on every issue and was always subtweeting and involved in Twitter arguments like I was the person I am talking about now. I've made a conscious effort to change the way I interact and present myself online since 2019 and my life is genuinely so much more peaceful and relaxed than it ever was when I was getting involved in absolutely everything. So I'm only saying this because I want to inspire some people who may be having some doubts about like how satisfied they are with how they respond to things online. I would like to see more people gain that insight and get the same benefits I have. So at this point, I've kind of developed like a zero tolerance policy for subtweeting about me. Whether I barely know you or you're someone I consider a really good friend, I will unfollow anyone who I firmly believe is subtweeting directly about me. We as a technological generation have placed so much meaning on following someone and being mutual followers. Like if you unfollow someone, that means that you hate them. And unfollowing is really not a big deal. It just means I don't want to see the content you post on my personal feed. And I'm just really done choosing to watch people hurt me because I don't want to look like a bitch for unfollowing them. So the lesson to be learned here is just curate your space and be critical about your online presence. And question number seven is, what is your hope for the future of BookTube? I really hope BookTube just continues down its current path and, and maybe just gets better at what it's doing. I want it to continue growing. I want us to keep reading a greater range of books and having bigger discussions, having more creators from different walks of life bring in fresh perspectives. I want BookTube to gain more widespread recognition in every way, even within the publishing world as we've made many strides in collaborations between BookTubers and publishers. There's still like very few people in the publishing world that really see the value of BookTube when it comes to selling books. And it is those few people who are typically at the lower end of the company and often in fields of like marketing and publicity who are the ones trying to convince the CEOs and higher ups that BookTube is worthy of attention. And I'm really grateful for all the wonderful people I know in publishing who are doing that because we can't make these changes without you. I want BookTube to be viewed as a more established YouTube community because while BookTube has grown exponentially from where it was when I started, it is still not recognized as one of the major YouTube communities. Like you literally don't know BookTube exists unless you're in it. If you've never watched BookTube, you have no clue that there's this giant community right under the surface. And also I would really love to see more BookTubers recognize their value, especially when you are like an up and coming BookTuber who is only starting to grow following or starting to have more opportunities. I really did not begin to understand my worth and value as a creator and influencer, which like everyone hates that word, but you kind of just have to accept that there are people in this world whose opinions influence others. I don't think I really understood how deserving I am of not only what I have, but of the things that I'm continuing to strive for until the middle of like 2019, like five years into my booktube career, 
And that was really prompted by friends literally like sitting me down and being like, girl, know your worth. It's really hard to find that in the sea of toxicity on the internet, in the hatred that people will send to you, and in the way you are undervalued and degraded by the companies that you're working with. This stuff does not come in a handbook. In this world of like making a life on YouTube is still so new and unfamiliar. We are all figuring it out as we go. And that's why I'm so grateful to the amazing friends I have in my life that have empowered me to have this realization and, and really start making changes about the way I conduct my business side of booktube because I know it's what I'm worth and that's why I want to inspire these next generations of booktubers who are up and coming and in the same position that I was in a couple of years ago to know that you deserve to make ad revenue on videos you post for free on the internet for people to watch as many times as they want that getting a book or product sent to you for free is not a fair trade compared to the company who is going to make a lot of profit off of you recommending their product to an audience that one, is specifically curated for their product, but also two, really trusts and values your opinions. And I am by no means saying I'm ungrateful when things are sent for me for free because that is a huge privilege of this job. But I know that in these particular scenarios that I'm talking about, it is not an obligation, it's a choice, and that people are willing to pay me to do that exact same work, and most importantly, I'm deserving of being paid for that work. And people watching up until this point in this video are going to think that I am being conceited or that I am being full of myself or thinking that I deserve to be paid for making YouTube videos. But the way I deserve to be paid for the effort and energy and time and experience I am putting into doing what I am doing right now is exactly the same as when I deserve to be paid for clocking into work every day at a retail store or a restaurant. So my short and sweet message to the future of BookTube is keep doing what you're doing, keep growing and know your worth. So that concludes the booktube oldie tag. I had so much fun filming this video. I really loved reflecting on my past on booktube and I hope you guys enjoyed listening. Please don't forget to check out Ana Luisa Jewelry in the description below. You can get yourself some really gorgeous pieces like the ones that I am wearing for 10% off using the link in the description. Because this is the booktube oldie tag, I am so curious to know how long you have been involved in booktube for, whether you have been watching booktube for years, whether you just discovered booktube this week, or maybe you are somebody who has been making booktube videos for as long as you can remember. <laughs> I would love to know, but that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon for a new video. Bye!